Good evening. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Try one more time. Amen. That's a lot better. <laughs> Praise God. Sorry about that. Wanted to check to see if you was out there with us tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in and being with us out there on the Internet. We're so glad to be with you for Friday night live worship right here at Glory Tabernacle. This is a time when we're going to enter in and worship the Lord. And the Lord has sent us a feast of great worshipers and speakers and everything else tonight. We're so glad to have Stoney back with us. And he was such a blessing last week, and we're so glad to have him back with us. And then our, we have speakers all the way from South Africa. And Rona will be introducing those to you later on. So don't be a spectator tonight. Be a participator. Let's join in and worship the Lord together for Friday night live worship. God bless you. Hallelujah. Take it away, son. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, all over the world, this song came out a few years ago, and it's just been all over the place. I'm going to my drums because i got to hear a little bit of pattern here. I know. Can you guys hear the little bit of the drums there? All right. days of Elijah, yes it is, declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and storm, still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the Lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call so lift your voice it's the year of jubilee out of Zion salvation dry bones, the dry bones becoming as flesh. These are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, for the fields, they're white in the world. And we are your laborers.
Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. God like Jehovah. There's no 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 God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining a light for sun. At the trumpet call, so let your voice just to hear our jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Oh, let your voice just to hear our jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation for your salvation. Amen. Thank you for your salvation, Lord.
God and oh see how great how great is our God Love. 
verse again and I really want to emphasize one phrase in that song it goes Jesus there is none beside you righteous ruler of the earth oh nation will come and bow down did you hear that nations will come and bow down nations will come and bow
heart of God, Psalms 2, 8, he says what? Ask. Ask for the nations. Tonight we're, we're declaring that every nation that knows a Muslim now will know the name of Jesus. Every nation. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of my Lord and of his Christ. Tonight the nations are coming into the kingdom of God. Let's sing that line again, Stoney. The nations will come and bow down. Jesus, you believe it? Yes. There is none beside you. Righteous ruler of the earth. Ruler of the earth. <laughs> oh, nations who come and bow down. I 
John said, when I saw him, I fell to my feet as if I were dead. Just the thought of being able to see God like that in person. And yet he has allowed us to arise in his glory, to rise up and stand with him. What an awesome God. What a mighty God. So I can stand and sing your glory, Lord, and declare the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, and declare your goodness to the nations and say, let God arise. Let God arise, let God arise and let us stand in awe of you, Jesus, of you, our God. No one else is worthy of the glory and praise and honor. But you, Jesus, you, Jesus, you, you're all I want.
you're all I've ever needed you're all I want help me know you close to you and never let me go I'd lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm afraid you are my desire Yes, Lord, no one else will do. Cause nothing else could take your place. To feel the warmth of your grace. Help me find a way. Bring me back to you.
We need to know you are near, Jesus. Yes, yeah. Mm. Holy is your name. 
praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Thank you so much. It's such honor to have you back with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're glad to have our visitors and some of our extended family with us tonight. I was thinking a moment ago, we have representation in this room from Japan, from China, from Israel, from Africa. Is there another nation? We have in the States, we have uh, North Dakota, Tennessee, uh, of course, uh, Arkansas represented, Arkansas, and so, oh, Montana, yeah, and Missouri. Um, we're glad to have Pastor Sheila and her uh, church family and friends back with us. You know, I don't count Sheila a visitor anymore. This is part of our extended family. This is our Branson, some of our Branson family. So we're always glad to have her. Uh, and we're so glad for each of you that are here. Before Rona comes to introduce the speaker for the night, I want to remind you that this coming November the 5th, starts our harvest gathering right here at Glory Tabernacle with uh, Pastor Derek Kuhn and Mark Bristol as some of our guest speakers, both of them mighty men of God. I think everybody knows Derek Kuhn and his tremendous uh, teaching, and we all love and appreciate him. So if you aren't registered yet, Register to come to Harvest Gathering quickly. We need your registration in now uh, for Harvest Gathering. Just go on the Internet there and click under Harvest Gathering. If you are flying in, make sure you call the office and find out the days and the times that the shuttles will run before you purchase your ticket. This is very vital because we can't run over here 30 minutes and pick you up. This is nine hours that our drivers are out on that road in order to bring, go and get a shuttle group and bring them back and wait for the different ones. So uh, it's very vital that you fly on the right days. So if you're coming in by plane, please call the office and make sure that you have the right date uh, and the right time to fly in. Another thing is right behind that, our chaplain training course one, two, and three is going to be taught down in the valley, and it will be November 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th that you'll be studying, and you'll be going home on the 14th. So if you're flying in for that, please call and get the dates that we run shuttles before you buy your ticket. Don't buy your ticket on the wrong day and then call. We appreciate that so much. Come, we're waiting for your call here. Rona, come and introduce our very special guests tonight. We're so honored to have them here, but you can do a better job than I can. Thank you. Before I do that, I'm going to ask the moon to stand still. I'm going to ask the whole world to stand still while we change the battery in this microphone. Boy, that was quick work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, 
well, before I get totally drunk, phew, ah, I just want to introduce our wonderful guest from South Africa. Oh, we are so honored to have them here. We're so excited. Myrna and I have been just excited, just waiting for today. <laughs> because we know they're going to bring us a revelation from the Lord. And um, Pastor Etienne Brom, we met, met him last year in Cape Town. He has a church in Cape Town and he has the most wonderful people, wonderful ladies that we met last year and they helped us throughout our whole trip. They organized our trip for, for us this year when the team went down. And I don't want to say too much because the Holy Ghost is going to speak for himself. But I just want to say that Pastor Etienne is one of Bob Jones' spiritual sons. And with him is his co-pastor, Pastor Frick De Beer. And they are wonderful men of God that walk in the spirit and that walk in truth. And I just want to give them all the time and the, all the freedom to share whatever God shows them. And we're just excited to, to hear from them. So Pastor Etienne, thank you so much. God bless. Good evening, everybody. I must say it's, a, it's an honor, it's a pleasure to be here, to be in the Valley of the Angels. And I've, I was sitting this afternoon in the presence of Father, and I just thought, wow, I'm so blessed to be here. Because I think the other, only other two places in the world that I've seen so many angels were in Jerusalem and in Moravian Falls. Those are, and I've traveled the world, I've been all over, and I've never seen this again. It's, it's amazing. Yesterday, I've been spending time in Moravian Falls, and today, yes, yeah, so God is just blessing us. Let's pray together. Father, we invoke your holy presence. I ask that you just come and you breathe into all of us. That your breath of love, of joy, of glory, of holiness, just come and consume us, Father. And I ask that your cloud of your presence will come and clothe us. Lord, we are so privileged to be in the presence of the King. There are no words to describe you. You are majesty, you are glory. You are the great I am. You are our King and our Father. Lord, tonight we open up our hearts and our spirits. We ask you, come and minister to us. Come and shift us. Come and teach us your ways and your will. And give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And give us the heart of the Father. We thank you for what you are going to do to us. And we know by just being in your presence, we will never be the same again. Because every second in your presence, we're being moved from glory to glory. Being more and more like our King. We just want to come and declare tonight that we love you. You are our first love. And we can only pray that in the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. Well, I hope you're expectant. As we move into this new season, I know it's a season of change, it's a season of a renewal, and this is a season where God's going to come and He's going to destroy the spirit of religion. Because religion has stolen so much of us. And about six weeks ago, the Lord spoke and said, Stand up in church and tell the people, It is time. 
It is time for the new things. It's time for the deeper revelation. It's time for the mysteries and the secrets of heaven. People don't want to listen to preaching anymore. They want to encounter Jesus. They want revelation. Why? Because your spirit is created to His image. And what does your spirit feed on? It feeds on the Word. It feeds on His presence. But there's a thing that is like a steroid, like a booster to your spirit. And that is revelation. Ephesians 3. They speak about it and Paul says that I received my mysteries of heaven in revelation. So you released a key to us. So I want to tell you all tonight If you're not living a lifestyle of revelation, you're not living with the Father. You're not living with the Father. And you're never going to walk in the fullness of Jesus. A few weeks ago, about three, four weeks ago, I sat with Jesus in the palace. And he looked at me and he said, Eden, how how big do you think your spirit is? And I thought, I'm going to blow him away. I'm going to tell him. And I sat there and I looked at him and I smiled and said, Lord, probably three to five stories high. And he turned around and looked at me and smiled and said, "Uh, You are so small, you're still in the mother's womb. I said, What do you mean, Father? He said, If you were created to my image, your spirit, how big is your father? He said, In Revelation 1, it says that your father stands with the stars in his hands. So ain't your spirit supposed to be the same size? And your spirit supposed to stand to the stars in the hand. And if you just get a little smile, I think if we are very conservative in the smallest stars that there are, 120,000 earths fit in one star. In the smallest stars. So how big are we supposed to be? Well, let's talk quickly about America. Well, America has been called to lead the world into... Um, in a spiritual way as the spiritual leader and also economically as the leader in the world. But they've abdicated their position. But the grace of God is again upon them now. We're moving into a season of grace. And this is where God is crying out to all of you to stand up to His spiritual people to his children to his sons to his priests to his kings to stand up and take up their positions to destroy the enemy and i tell you america it's time not to pray anymore lord just open our leaders eyes and bless them and show them the truth it is time lord remove the ungodly and replace them by the godly and then you work with the ungodly on the side we're trying to be too good too religious. Those are religious prayers. Lord, just, just bless him. Just open his eyes. Just be good for him. No, Lord, remove the ungodly. Work with him. Prepare him for your glory. But replace it by the glory. Why? Because America needs to align to what they've been called through. To their foundations, to the promises and the covenants that they have made to God. And God showed me, said, the earth and America is crying out to him. And it's amazing this whole afternoon as we were driving around this place. The Lord said, the glory of God is going to be revealed in this valley through nature. Through nature. Mighty miracles are going to happen and the revelation of Jesus is going to come in this valley. The gold and the glory through nature. God's going to start speaking to America through nature. So there's going to come a move and a shake. That's going to rock the political circles. It's going to rock the economy as well. But the ones that are aligned are going to prosper. They're going to walk in abundance. They're going to stand in the river of life. They're going to stand in the oil of Jesus. And the Lord showed me, said, we've all heard it, that it says that the earth is groaning for Why is it groaning? 
Who is groaning? Remember that the most pure gold and precious stones, everything comes out of the center of the earth. They are glory locked up in the center of the earth and it wants to burst out. Now, if you look at Genesis when creation took place, he said, and I made earth and I called it heaven. I make the outspan, I called it heaven. There are two heavens. So where there's a heaven, there's a throne room. So in the center of earth, there's a throne room. And then if we go, and the Lord gave me the revelation one day in the palace, he said, remember when Saul went to the witch, And they called out Samuel. Where did Samuel come from? Out of the earth. The saints are crying and groaning out of the earth for the glory of God to be revealed. And that's why the wells need to be opened. So that the glory of God can fill Numbers 14.21. The whole earth will be filled with my glory. It's in the inside. It needs to come from the inside out. The same with Jesus and you. It needs to come from the inside out. Wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding needs to come from the inside out. Not from the outside in. Because the fullness of God is inside of you. Why do you think the earth is, is surrounded by diamonds in the course of the earth? What have you been created as a bride? It's a sign, it's a prophetic sign of the ring, your diamond ring that God has created for you. The earth is created to become the bride. So this is a time of revelation, it's a season, it's an amazing time. And I want to tell you all tonight, if ever heaven was open, it's now. And there's no reason to come and tell me, I've only been in heaven once this week or or once this day. You're supposed to walk in heaven and earth on the same time, all time. That's what we've been created, to not go to and throw, but to go to ascend and descend. Jesus said, my one foot is in heaven, the other is on earth. If you are seated in your Father where you're supposed to be. And I think that is one one of the messages I've got for you tonight is that God is calling us to a place of reconciliation. In Ephesians 1 from verse 9, he says, Making known to us the mysteries of His will according to His purpose which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time To unite all things in Him. And things in heaven and things on earth. Colossians 1. He says. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. Verse 19, it says, For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. You've been created for the glory of God to be one with Him, to dwell with the Father wherever He dwells. So when Jesus said, my one foot is in heaven, my other foot is on earth, how are you supposed to stand? And I think one of the biggest problems or the keys, I'm going to release little keys to you so that you can go and sit and meditate with the Father. Not here, in heaven. That's where you meditate with the Father, face to face. That's what you've been created for, a face to face relationship. A lot of times when we look at ourselves, we're looking at Jesus inside of ourselves. But I think in the season that we are moving into, you need to see yourself in Him. Change your mindset. I had an encounter in the palace, and I was sitting at a table in one of the rooms, 
And Jesus pushed the Bible in front of me and said, read Revelations 1. So I read it, and he asked me, he said, what did you see and what did you read? So I explained, I explained to him, I said, Lord, how are you coming down from heaven? I saw the stars in your hand. I saw the sword out of your mouth. I saw the fire coming out of the out, the glory of your hair. I saw the angel. It's amazing. And he pushed the word back to me. He said, you did not see and you did not read. And I read it a second time. And again he asked me, what did you see and what did you read? And again I explained the same to him. And he shook his head. He said, Etienne, you did not see and you did not read. Read it again. So I read it a third time. And he said, what did you see? What did I said, Lord, I can't add on to it. This is what your word says. And then he said, Etienne, if you were truly intimate with me, you would have seen yourself in the vision. And I said, Lord, how arrogant can I be to see myself descending with you from heavenly places? I said, how am I going to explain it to the people? He said, go to Colossians 3 verse 4. You will, when I appear, you will appear for, with me from heavenly places. And that's why it's a key that you need to see yourself inside of Him. When your spirit grows into the giant that it was created to be, it will fill the body of Christ. That's why once he told me, he said, the snakes bite the heels of the people. I said, yes, Lord. I said, but Etienne, are you intimate? I said, yes, Lord. I said, so how is it possible to bite you? Because I've got feet of brass. And that's why every morning he taught me, you need to step into me. I said, Lord, but you are omnipresent, you're ever present, you're everywhere, I'm in your presence all the time. He said, Etienne, it's like when you're making fire, there are flames, and the smoke come out. The smoke is my presence, but my power is in the fire. You need to step in the fire. And that is what we need to do in the season. God's whole life, His love, His story is about reconciliation. Why? When we are reconciled with Him, we are walking in glory and He can bless us. His heart is about blessing His son and daughters. And then this year in 2014, this whole year is about aligning His sons and daughters back, their eyes, fixing their eyes back to Him taking it off our own kingdoms, getting rid of ourselves, putting us through fire, trying trials and tribulations, and fires are blessings. Desert times are blessings. It's, it's acts of love because it gets rid of everything that stands between you and your blessing and your king. So whenever you're in the fire, it doesn't matter what your circumstances is, start praising God. Start praising God. He says in Psalm 23, I've prepared a table in front of your enemy. And so one day I sat in heaven and said, come here, I want to show you something. And I said, I've prepared a table for you. So I went and I went to this room and there was a table probably about five meters wide and it was filled with the most amazing foods and fruit and chocolates and everything. So he said, and there's one, she said, sit and eat, feast on me. So I started eating, and I will never forget it. Every bite in heaven that I took, he blessed me with something. I bless you with that. And he laughed, and he laughed, he stood. And the next moment, he said, look behind you. And as I turned around, I got the fright of my life. I shook and I shrank like that, and I said, Lord, because behind me were demonic powers, stories high. And he said, look in front of you again. And I looked at him and said, this is how I prepare my children's tables. You feast on me. 
I stand in front of them. I look at your enemy. And the fire comes out of my eyes in all circumstances. You just focus on me and feast on me. So it doesn't matter what circumstances you are going through now. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Not in the circumstances. Not on the darkness. He will fight your wars for you. Well, in the season, the alignment is taking place. It's preparing us. Why? He wants us all to walk in the purpose of His will, according to Ephesians 1. We've been created to the purpose of His will. Why? And the purpose of the will is the fullness of His heavenly blessings. That is His desire to release heaven to earth. That is what, that's why He told us, bring heaven to earth. And I was in August in Mozambique doing crusades there. And he said to me one morning, standing in front of me, he looked at me and said, you know the scripture that says, Lord, we heal the sick, we preach the gospel, we deliver the people, and I told them, I don't know them. He said, tell the people that ain't walking in their callings, I don't know them. Because their callings are my plans. If they're not in the calling, they're not in my plan. So this is the alignment. So you've got time. There's grace upon you. Get into your calling. And if you're going to wait for somebody else to give you a platform or open your door, you're going to wait forever. God's already given you a vision. He's given you a blueprint. He's given you a plan. You need to step into it in faith. It is time. Why? 2015 is going to be the outpouring of the Spirit like you've never seen it in history. He told me the influence of my outpour in 2015 will be greater than the day of Pentecost. It's a time for the greater moves. It's a time for the greater miracles. It's a time for the fire and the lightning of God to be released upon earth. And I've seen many things. I've been, been in Pakistan now in September. We did crusades, over 100,000 peop, 100, people per night. And most of them are Muslims, at least 90%. And then you get at least 30, 40, 50,000 healings per, month, per night. 30, 40, 50,000 salvations per night. And how does God do it? By revealing himself. He always starts with a miracle. You get up there. You get all the people out of the wheelchairs. You get all the blind to see. And then they storm to the stage. We want your God. He's alive. I'll never forget this year. My first night that I, I arrived there. There were about 50,000 people at this crusade. And I saw many wheelchairs all over the set. And he said, walk on the stage and just tell them, all the wheelchairs stay in the stadium tonight. All of you must walk out. So I stood and went on the stage before I even prayed or introduced myself. I just said, I just want to tell you, you leave all your wheelchairs here tonight. And you walk out of the stadium in the name of Jesus. And it was brilliant. At the end of the evening, as the people left the stadium, you saw the wheelchairs standing all over the place. That is God. That is your God. And what are you doing about it?